Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I run a full-time scrunchie business and I do YouTube on the side as well. So, with that out of the way, I'm doing a little Christmas series on like DIY gifts you can give to like your friends, family, even your co-workers. I don't know, anyone you want. Today I did Shrinky Dinks, I think they're called, or they're just plastic that shrinks really small into a really hard thick plastic and they are seriously the cutest things ever. I was a bit skeptical at first. This is the paper I used. It is Graphics Shrink Film. I got clear and super sanded. Uh, the clear one was inkjet, so I was able to use that with my printer. And I would definitely recommend for anyone that like has an iPad or just wants to print out images and doesn't want to draw on like paper and rather draw on their iPad or something like I do. Definitely get inkjet, it made it so much easier. So you can make all sorts with these. Make earrings, charms, little like badge things. You could do key rings, necklaces. Like the possibilities are endless really. But the ones I printed out from my iPad were so amazing. I love them so much. So I made a whole bunch of them. I will go through them all at the end, but like pretty much I'll just get a couple of my hands so you can see. So here's just like a little example of what I made. I'm really happy with how most of these turned out, especially like the printed ones that I did for my iPad. We'll get right into the tutorial and stay to the end if you want to see all my creations because I will go through them with you. First I grabbed my iPad and did some little pictures and images on here. I just drew some things and I also put a picture of me and my little cousin on there because I thought that looked really cute at the keychain for her birthday. And then I just sent it to my computer so I could print it out. So this is the paper I'm using, it's a shrink film brand and I also got some markers and a sharpie. Make sure to do all your designs pretty big because they do shrink down heaps. I grabbed the one that you can draw on and I started doing little pictures. I used Faber-Castell markers and honestly they weren't very good. I think it might have been because I didn't let the paper dry before I put something on top of it uh, by accident and it sort of smudged everywhere. Yeah, it didn't turn out very well. I know pencils work really, really well and also just actual permanent markers like Sharpie markers in different colors. So definitely do some tests before you use up all your paper. I sent the image from my iPad to my computer and then put it on a Word doc and printed it out. I did it a little bit smaller than the normal piece of paper because I noticed when I put it into the tray that it was a little bit smaller than a standard A4 sheet. I really like the quality of that one, so I left it and I decided to cut all the pieces out. You'll notice when I'm cutting, I left a little bit of a space around them and I regretted doing that almost instantly. <laughs> I would definitely recommend cutting like close to the edge. I just did not like the look of the little gap in between. Some people do, but I didn't. Also try to make each edge very neat and don't leave any jagged bits because it might make it a bit sharp when it does shrink down. So just make sure everything is smooth when you do cut it out and try and not leave too many jagged edges. In this step, it's really important to figure out what these final pieces will be. So if they're gonna be earrings or a necklace, for example, you might need to put a hole punch at the top or leave a little space at the top so you could add a hole later. I'll definitely recommend using just a normal hole punch and making it that way because it is quite hard to add holes in later if you don't have the right tools. I did a few test pieces first to see what I was doing and how to do it. But pretty much all I did was I put the oven up to 150 degrees. It says on the packet 149 to 177. But I decided to go with 150 and see how I went. Once I was at 150 and preheated for a while, I put the designs in and I did it one by one just to make sure I was doing it correctly. It does say, I think, between one to three minutes and that's pretty much what I did. I just watched them. You'll see in my videos, they curl up and then they like go straight back down after a bit. And once they curled up and they went down flat, that's when I took them out. Once you take it out of the oven, place something heavy on top like a bowl or a plate and that just flattens them out a little bit. I also put some baking paper in between just so they wouldn't stick or anything. I don't think they would anyway but just to be safe. I think the average amount of time I left my little pieces in for would have been about a minute, a minute and a half. Because my pieces were pretty small to begin with anyway, they did not take very long. 
But yeah, I, I found every time that they flattened out, I took them out straight away and they all turned out really well. Obviously this will depend on what sort of brand paper you use. I know different brands have different instructions. So you just have to maybe do a couple of test runs and see what works best. My instructions recommended to put a piece of paper in the oven as well and put it on top. The one time I did that, the whole piece like folded over and stuck to each other. So I don't really recommend to do that because it's better to watch and see how long the item needs before taking it out. So yeah, that's up to you. So I really wanted to make this one into a key ring. So I burnt a hole into it with a needle and a lighter. It's not the safest option, so please don't do that without parental permission. It would have been much easier to just do a hole punch before baking it. So these are all my designs that I did. I'm really happy with how most of them turned out. You can see where some of them didn't look that great with the white or the clear background around it. The white one's not so bad, but the super sanded did not turn out that great. But they've turned into a really thick plastic, which I was really surprised. I just, I wasn't expecting it to be that thick and so hard, which was really good. I went through the pieces and decided on which ones I'm gonna make into earrings and necklaces and whatnot. And then I went and had a look through my supplies and saw what I could make at the moment and what I would have to get some more stuff for in the future. I had a few different things hanging around like key rings and studs and whatnot. But I didn't want to make little holes in the plastic at the moment. I think I'll try find something else to do that with or maybe I'll just print them out again and do it again and put holes in before I shrink them down. But I was really happy with how everything turned out. I'll definitely recommend, I think I've already mentioned it in the video anyway, but definitely if you do want to do holes to do like drawy bits, definitely do a hole before you cook them because they're really hard and I was able to get a needle through them by like burning the needle but it's a bit unsafe <laughs> so yeah um there's definitely different ways you could do it afterwards but it's probably easier just to do it beforehand and know exactly what you want to do with those pieces thank you so much for watching I hope you really enjoyed this video I really really loved making this is probably one of my favorite tutorials I'm definitely going to get more of this film stuff and just print out my iPad creations on my Procreate because this is just so cool. I love it so much. And make sure to like and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out. And I hope you have a really fantastic day. Yeah, I think I'm going to go now. Bye.